luckily managed to fix it. I'm very I'm glad just to be here. We drove very slowly through Chuffer in case we did it again. The rally arrived at Donington Park next, where cars made two runs through the four-mile stage. It started and ended on the famous racetrack, but ran off-road in between. It's here we had our specially timed televised section with its own separate trophy for the car recording, the fastest combined time for both runs. Here's what happened to the leaders first time through the stage. This is the man the crowd have been waiting for, and the good news is that Colin McRae has arrived here at Donington with a two-second lead over Mackinnon, and that's thanks to his fastest time at Chatsworth. He was actually four seconds faster than any other driver there. He's really going well. It's always a difficult day for the drivers on this first day, but you must be delighted, David, with what Colin has done so far. Yes, he's set off in very sensible style, and see, it's one of those days when you can lose everything and not win an awful lot, so the real trick is to make sure you, you come out at the end of the day without any, any damage. You presumably haven't had a chance to tell Colin what you think of this little stage? Well, no, we haven't had a chance to speak, but it's drier than I've ever seen it before. You can see the dust there now. It's, it really is dry conditions here. And everything going well with this car, because we know you've had trouble with one of them. Yes, but it seems to be working fine here. You can see this is the high-speed start of the stage now. Yep. Well, they're going to zoom down a very high-speed straight, and we're looking for them coming to the yump. And, of course, Colin is the first man through, so he will be setting the time for the others to follow. Just going past the stop now. So, Colin McRae, the first man to go through the Top Gear special stage, and we're waiting to see his time, the time that the others have to follow. This is car 10, Kenneth Erickson in the Mitsubishi, the other Japanese team, which of course is hoping to clinch the Manufacturers' Championship here. It's the third version of the Lancer. It's a superb handling car, David. It's clocked up two wins. It's had no fewer than nine top six placings. Now, that's some reliability, isn't it? Yes, they've had a very good year. It's probably the best year for a long time, and uh, they've won the Asia Pacific Championship at the same time, so you can't take that away from them. But you are determined to beat them here. Do you think you can do it? It's going to be a very close run thing, and I think we'll get an indication now over this short little section of the stage as how close it's going to be. Well, on the left of your screen, you'll see Colin McRae's time, 1 minute 7.84. Ericsson, of course, only really at the beginning of the stage. Oh, and he's off it! My word, we didn't really expect wide. that, David. He's gone really wide, and the hairpin there and again there. It's uh, a little bit unusual for Kenneth. He's normally very tidy. The strange thing about this Sunday, which some of the drivers say should be a taking it easy day, is that so many of the big names make mistakes on what looks simple, but of course it isn't as easy as it looks, is it? Well, no, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of pressure on them, and you know, you've got all the crowds out there watching and cheering you on. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those days where the excitement and the adrenaline gets to them, I think. Well, now we move on to the third of the Bing manufacturers. This is Bruno Thierry, 33 years old. He's supposed to be a bit of a tarmac specialist, so he should be enjoying this out of the tunnel. Coming down now to the first of our right-handers. He's gone off the Grand Prix track, under the tunnel, onto our special stage. What do you think of that performance so far? Well, Bruno, as you said, he's a specialist on tarmac, Belgian driver, brought up on the tarmac roads of Europe, but uh, he's getting better all the time on the gravel, and I think uh, a reliable performance from him on this rally will see him up in the top five at the end of the day. Well, we know that Eric didn't manage to match Colin's time. Thierry, just coming up to the minute mark, 17.84 to, to beat. We wouldn't expect Ericsson to have been as fast after that spin, but Thierry going very steadily indeed. Now this is the second Subaru, one of Spain's most popular sportsmen, but of course, if Carlos Sainz won here and won the World Championship, he'd probably be fairly unpopular in Britain. Although, we have to admire him as a driver and also as a sportsman, David. Now he's a superbly professional person. He's, you know, he's a national squash champion, Real Madrid football, player he's he's done everything in his time so he's uh, and you just watch him in a car he's uh, magnificent whoops Oops. Uh, not, oh. uh, <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's perhaps not his usual style well the next car is tommy mackinnon the fifth car to take the top gear challenge and he sees in fact a top gear favorite tommy mackinnon 
He very nearly won last year's British Formula 2 Championship in the Nissan, and of course, that earned him a place in the Mitsubishi Championship team. After he won the Paris Plates and the Ford, how do these drivers keep swapping cars and managing to do so well, Dave? Well, he's staying with Mitsubishi for next season, and uh, he's certainly come on form now. He's, a, he's a, always been spotted as a talented young driver, and he's had a good opportunity now. It's always very difficult sitting here to see just how fast they're going with the close at cars, but you can see this man really pushing in. Now the breaking point where Carlos lost it, so let's see how he takes it. <laughs> the finish way. Now this is Malcolm Wilson, surely one of the most popular rally drivers in Britain. Former British champion, repairs his car himself, and has said, David, that if he doesn't win here, if he does win here, sorry, he's going to hang up his helmet, which would be a pity. He's a, a great contributor to the sport. Uh, it would be a lifetime's ambition for him to win the RAC rally, and he's been so popular winning the British Championship and having a bad accident in his early days when he broke both his ankles. I think that set him back enormously when he was only in his early 20s, but... Uh, He's got a very good team now up in Carlisle, and I think he'll move on to team management very effectively. Well, Colin's still the fastest man here. Malcolm not making any mistakes, hanging out in his customary style. It's good to see so many British drivers up the front now. We've got a, a number of good drivers here today. Now, of course, Richard's had a dramatic start to the day because uh, first stage of the morning, he damaged the steering on his car, hit a log, and uh, he's um, pulling his way back up the field now. Well, it's a welcome sight, actually, because we, we were worried earlier that we'd see him again. I mean, he's still only 25. Uh, you've sent him to the Far East to pile on the experience, but I don't think he'll have forgotten British conditions. I mean, he is a former British champion. How did he manage to get to the next service stop at, uh, at Chesterfield? Well, he actually repaired the, the, the steering column damage himself. He managed to fix it all. They carry spare parts in the car these days because the servicing is so limited that they, they have to be a little adept themselves to, to fix their cars in these circumstances. Now, this is our first look at Portugal's Rio Madeira. Now, he is this year's Group N World Champion. And his Group N successes have contributed massively to the fact that Mitsubishi could win the World Manufacturers Championship. So the first run over and Tony Mason caught up with some of the drivers. Oh Colin, what do you think of that stage then? Yes, Donington's one of the, the best stages of today. The rest of the man is so good, but Donington's quite a very good stage. What about that tunnel? A bit narrow? A little bit narrow, yeah, but the curbs keep you in line. What was the most difficult section there? But uh, yes, it's not, I think on the on the track because we have the I'm, we have the wrong tire choice. I think on the gravel is okay, but on the track we have to do careful. And you are the tarmac specialist, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> with the wrong tire choice. <laughs> What's the matter? What have you been hitting, Tommy? No, nothing. Just slightly rear wheel on the to the to the zone, but what nothing was, serious. Was that on the curb near the tunnel or? Yes, that's before the tunnel. Yes, there was some uh, something on the road, and I had to. <laughs> what do you think of this section? Uh, it's okay, but it's quite difficult to find a correct tire choice because we have a, we had the already one stage before this, and and uh, so. It seems that we have a quite good... Do you think you've got the right tyre choice for this stage? I think here we could have uh, got away with having a racing tyre actually, but uh, you live and learn. Well, that's what Mitsubishi did. Yeah, exactly, and they've, they've been doing good times around here, so we just have to try as hard as we can. And that was Barry Gill commentating with our special guest Subaru team boss David Richards and Tony Mason, of course. Plenty of excitement, I'm sure you'll agree, on that first run through Donington. McRae may have been fastest through our stage, but Tommy Mackinnon, the Mitsubishi, was fastest over the full course by four seconds from Kenneth Erickson. McRae and Sainz, two seconds adrift, then it was Burns and Thierry. More action from the leading cars on their second run a little later in the programme. But there were plenty of fine individual performances from the drivers lower down the field. Here's a look at the best of the rest. Again, Barry Gill with David Richards. Now, let's have a look at Alistair McRae in the Malcolm Wilson prepared Ford Escort. 
His first run was 1 minute 10.32. Is, is something hanging down there? It's only the front, uh, front of the car. These, there, there are lots of cosmetic additions to these cars, and they get knocked off regularly, unfortunately. As we've said, he's had a very successful year in the Nissan Sunny GTI. And he scored that sensational outright victory on the Vauxhall Rally of Wales, beating all the four-wheel drive cars, and he followed it up with a Formula 2 win in Ulster. And certainly has not only the pedigree, but the, the family excitement that shows at times. It's interesting, Colin, uh, Colin gets off the end of a stage these days now, this morning, and he asks what time Carlos does, and then he asks, what, what about Alistair? <laughs> really? <laughs> So it's, uh, they're following the family fortunes in the team. Right, so what have you been doing at the front end there, Alistair? I'm not sure. Somebody said the spoiler was hanging off, but we haven't hit anything, so it must just have come loose. You just dropped off like it on its own accord. Yeah, nothing to do with the driver. <laughs> How are you liking the Escort? You're putting in some pretty good times. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it, obviously. Playing herself in a bit gently. It's, it's new to me, been back in four-wheel drive, but enjoying it. The car's going very well, so can't complain. Well, let's have another look at Yama Kudaleto in the two-wheel drive Nissan Sunny. Uh, he was eighth in this year's British Championship because he had accidents on the tarmac stages in Elster and the Isle of Man. He will certainly be looking forward to the forest, but he's not going badly here. And he was leading Formula 2 before the Donington stage. So he is obviously determined to build on the lead here and a flying fin again. They really scrabble for traction, these front-wheel drive cars. You can see the difference out of the corners compared with the four-wheel drive. Two minutes, 2.15.27. He's not going to beat Colin, but well, it's a little bit unfair yeah. to compare him with Colin, of course. We should be comparing him with the other Formula 2 cars, and uh, it's Caetoletto and uh, the Renault of Alain Auray, and uh, I'm sure he's going to hold his own against those drivers. I mean, as you say, the yump holds no terrors these days, does it, the way these cars are designed? Well, oh, no, that's not the way it's Gwinda. Oh, well, you're, you're smiling, Gwinda. You must have enjoyed that. Well, yeah, that was the best day so far for us. We haven't had a very good run up to now, but um, there we are. What are your problems? We had some brake problems on the first couple of stages, and I've done a couple of bad tyre choices as well. But, so where does that put you overall in the scheme of things in the Formula 2 section? Oh, I don't know, I'm just glad to still be here at the moment. <laughs> All right. This must be the second look at Alan Array. The Ulster Rally fans were so impressed with this man's driving, dramatic style of driving, as we've just seen, that they christened him Alan O'Reilly, which is, I suppose, the highest praise they can give him. But he's, and he's 42 years old, he's obviously got lots of experience, but he's lost none of his verve. And, as I say, he could have won the British Championship this year in the first time out in the Clio. You know, he's got a lot of experience in France in French Championship events up in the Alps and was particularly quick in, uh, in a Renault there. But uh, it's good to see him come over to Britain and do so well. Adds they, a lot of interest. They have a lot of tarmac rallies there too, don't they, David? Well, it's all tarmac, really. The French Championship, they have a gravel series, but the primary interest in France is in the, uh, in the Asphalt Championship. This is De Mavis on his second run, been holding a top 10 place today. He was third in this year's British Championship. He's certainly at home here, this Belgian. Let's have a look. We're looking at the cumulative time of 2.15.27. We haven't seen anybody match Colin McRae there. Obviously, oh, De Mavis. No, that's, that's, that's second interesting. big that's, incident, David. Well, that's another Ford as well. It's the same thing that Thierry did on the same corner. And the same nationality as well. Two Belgians, two Fords, they do the same thing. <laughs> not their day. Definitely not their Not their day for the country that runs the common market. Well, now, this is the Yorkshireman who won the Group N category on last year's event. He's now back in a Ford Escort. It's Johnny Milner, of course. This year we've seen him out and about in a Nissan Sunny. And uh, I think I've already asked you, David, how hard is it for these drivers not just to swap from a two-wheel, four-wheel drive, but to keep swapping cars? Well, the cars these days, if you think these four-wheel drive cars are not dissimilar in performance, uh, obviously they're different in the, the layout of the cars from uh, the Cosworth with its inline engine and uh, you've got the Mitsubishis with a, a transverse engine. So the balance of the car, this car's particularly well balanced, as is the Subaru. There he goes. Now, that's not a bad time. Five seconds astray from Colin McRae. Perfect. 
Oh, 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 very athletic. This what's happening, Johnny? Now we just caught. Uh, when you come to the tunnel, just caught the back wheel on the curbstone. I was just checking it was okay, and it's it just caught it. Not not a problem. I mean the group air rims that we're using, and uh, magnesium rims, so they don't really bend easily. The intrepid Tony Mason with Johnny Milner. Well, rally fans love to see what's going on inside the cars. Here's a look at the contrasting styles of Colin McRae and Tommy Mackinnon. We pick them up at the same point on the stage. Watch how their positions change. On board pace notes from Colin's co-driver, Derek Ringer. Tunnel, 50. Here, five right plus over crest. Titans and three left minus. Titans maybe. And long two right plus. Into four left plus. Line and opens. 100. Six left, Titans and four left plus over crest. 70. Turn. Slow three right, line. And right and crest and three left minus. 200. Keep right into six left, opens over crest. 100. Turn to right, narrows, 70. To right, open. A pretty tough job being a co-driver. Well, back to the top cars in action here at Donington Park, here tackling the stage for the second time. This must be Colin's second run through the stage now, and he's uh, just come out of the tunnel now, and let's see how he does, does compared with his first time. He's certainly set the pace for everybody here. I don't know if the stage is going to get any faster. Sometimes, of course, once you get a few cars through the stage, Barry, it actually speeds up. They clear that loose surface off the top, and it will get a little bit quicker. Well, what we're looking for, of course, just to remind people who may just have tuned in, is we're looking for the cumulative time over this 0.9 mile top gear stage. A stage within a circle. Oh, that was a little bit close, another straw bale gone to the wind. Well, you see, this morning, Richard Burns, his teammate, uh, touched what he thought was a straw bale, and there was a lug behind it, which didn't do him any good at all. So, fortunately, there was nothing like that here, but that was quite a moment, David. The Ericsson second time here. Right, our second look at Kenny Ericsson, who on the first run clocked 1 minute 9.67. Kenny's got an amazing record here, you know, David. He's been second in 1990, 1991, and 1993. And the Mitsubishi seem to have a really powerful engine there. Yeah, I think they've, they've got a very good engine. The engines are prepared for them in Japan by their factory there. and. Uh, Kenneth's uh, results over the whole world championship over the last few years have been, he's one of the most consistent and probably one of the, the most underrated drivers out there today. Uh, I think Kenneth's looking for a third place in the championship this year. Of course, he's coming to join my team next year, so this is his last ra rally in a Mitsubishi. Right, now here comes Bruno Thierry again for the second run. Uh, he's really had a disappointment this year. We were talking about Richard Burns servicing and doing his own servicing. Bruno Thierry was almost certain to win the Corsican Rally. Then he had a problem between the service stops and he had to try and repair it himself with the mechanic standing helplessly on. I mean, that must be totally frustrating for a driver, though. That was a very frustrating situation for Bruno because he really was going to... Uh to win that event. I, oh, he's even closer. Now, he's taking the rear mud, no, the oh. rear bumper off his car on that particular occasion. Now, here's someone been waiting to see Carlos Sainz doing his second run. His first run was 1 minute 9.19. And this, of course, is the last rally in which we'll see Carlos in a Subaru. He signed for Toyota for next year, and he signed just three days before Team Toyota Europe was banned for a year. So what on earth will happen to him now, David? Well, that's something that uh, I guess we're all wanting to know at the moment. We're hoping that Toyota might make some alternative arrangements, but uh, we'll think we'll have to wait and see. Have you noticed that the second time through, they're, they're not much faster. It's, uh, they can do these stages blindfolded, I think. It always amazes me how quick they are the first time over them. Second overall after Clumber, and his first run here was 1 minute 8.66.
His co-driver is Sefo Hayani, who, of course, was world champion in 1985 when he's sitting alongside Timo Salazar. And we hear a lot about the drivers, David, but I know, as you've already said this afternoon, that you don't underestimate the role played by the co-drivers. Not in the slightest. I think uh, it looks very exciting from the outside, but I don't think there'll be many people that want to swap their places with uh, Sefo just at this moment in time. <laughs> I mean, you can see, you can see why the Finns are excited about it. Now, this is someone that people have come to watch. Markham Wilson, in his second run. His first run was 1 minute 9.36. He's got a major interest in this event, David. I mean, as you know, he's preparing Alison McRae's car as well. I mean, he must have his mind in two places at once. Yes, it's not easy being a team manager and a driver at the same time. It's, uh, of course, his sponsors there, Michelin. Now, I think it's going to be an interesting battle between the tyre companies this round. We've already heard Colin commenting on it, but I think the, uh, the tyres are so critical to the performance of the cars. And now here's Richard Burns again. Well, as we said, he's had a, a trying morning, uh, but uh, we're sure he really is trying. I mean, he had 30 seconds road penalties. He's now running behind Malcolm Wilson, but I mean, it's better for this to happen on the first day rather than the last one. Well, I think he was probably very fortunate to get through this morning, from what I understand. He broke the steering rack and had to effect his own repairs to it. We changed all the steering rack, the suspension on one side, and uh, well, as you can see, there's not a lot wrong with the car now. How long did all that take, then? Uh, well, we only have 20 minutes at these service points, but we have all the right people there, the right equipment, so and they've been practicing and they're well prepared for these jobs. The man who, with his group and performances, as we've said, is trying to help Mitsubishi win the World Manufacturers Championship. He's had a very good morning. He's obviously aiming for another top 10 points. Group Hall in his uh, Group N Mitsubishi. When we last heard, he was leading Group N, and his first run was 1 minute, uh, one minute 13 point 14 seconds. Was that better second time round, Colin? No, not really. We had the wrong tyres on. We were far too soft the compound, and the car was sliding all over the place. So, uh, have you lost time to other people there, do you think? Lost time to the Mitsubishi's, because they're running a racing tyre. So, if it had been wet, it would have been OK, but it's dried out an awful lot, so... Oh. It's not a big problem. Though. So, uh, how does that put you between you and Kenneth Erickson now? I think probably just behind Tommy, maybe. Or oh, behind Tommy? Yeah, but it's very close, so it doesn't matter. So, here's how the cars fared on their second fully timed run through Donington Park. Tommy Mackinnon again fastest, his teammate Kenneth Erickson two seconds behind, then Colin McRae followed by Seitz, Burns and Thierry. The end of the day leaderboard sees the Mitsubishis of Tommy Mackinnon and Kenneth Erickson holding first and second place. Colin McRae 12 seconds adrift, but more importantly a clear 14 seconds ahead of Carlos Seitz. Then it's Thierry followed by Malcolm Wilson. Tonight the drivers are overnight. V, five right plus, opens into turn long, one left. Into six right. Into six left. Into six left tightens. Into five right minus. Into five left tightens. Into five right tightens and six left minus. Rock outside. Into. Five left and four right, and Keir at long three left, opens, and Keir, three right, tightens to minus, into, three right, opens long, and four right plus, tightens long, don't cut, and six left, into four left plus, tightens line, and six crest, and Keir, six left, tightens to three left, minus, and long to right plus, don't cut. Into six left, 100, gate and five right plus, cut, 30.